uh, I'm very happy to announce how from the University of Philadelphia will tell us about dungeon bundles. Okay, uh, thanks, Bogdan, uh, for the introduction. Thank you for uh, the invitation to speak. So, yeah, so I'm going to talk about tangent bundles and tangent spaces uh, in chaotic geometry. Um, basically, the goal is to introduce some differentiable tool, like some differential tools uh, in a world where we sort of didn't necessarily have the differential tools available for, um, in order to try to help us understand some sort of interesting and exciting phenomena and developments that have been happening recently uh, in the world of chaotic geometry. Uh, so, I'm going to focus mostly on just a single example today, and hopefully I left myself time at the end to say how it generalizes. But let me try and set up that example. All right, so P is going to be a prime. And somehow I want to be very concrete. So I'll let Y be modular curve uh, maybe over QP of level uh, gamma 1 13. So this is just a scheme over QP. If I took its classification, so I could draw a picture of it. It would look something like this. Something like that. Uh, good. And as a scheme, I can think of it just in terms of its functor points on rings. And so if I take Y, I evaluate it at some ring R. This just gives me uh, isomorphism classes of pairs, EQ, where E for R is an elliptic curve, which you can think of just as gluing together Weierstrass equations locally over spec R. Uh, and Q uh, has exact order 13 on each geometric fiber. Okay, so this is some classical concrete thing. And I also want to look at another scheme which covers this one and sort of uh, a little bit bigger. So I'll call this Y infinity. Again, it's just a scheme over QP. It's the infinite level modular curve. Uh, and so this parameterizes triples uh, E, Q is above, and also some other piece of data I'll write as phi, uh, and phi is a trivialization of the tape module. So phi, an isomorphism from ZP squared to uh, the tape module, the chaotic tape module of E, which is just the limit of the P to the N portion. Okay, so it's inverse limit of the P to the N portion under multiplication by P, that's some, also some scheme. And, CP squared is some scheme, sort of relative over Y, and uh, I just want isomorphisms like this. Okay. Uh, and let me write down there's a natural forgetful map from Y infinity. Y just forgets this trivialization. And this is a GL2 ZP uh, torsor, sort of maybe you could say a profinite at all. GL2ZP torsor. Again, GL2ZP is just it's a scheme. Uh, okay, and so this is a very classical picture. Um, I want to talk about piatic geometry today. So let me tell you how to turn this into piatic geometry without actually saying anything about piatic geometry. Uh, so, like in the modern world of piatic geometry, we think of, well, instead of thinking of like originalic varieties, like blue dot convergent power series rings and so on. Uh, we think of everything as being functors of points on perfectoid rings, or sort of some, something like this. And so if I want to go to diamonds over QP, which are sort of just these nice functors, uh, then I have to say what y, so what y diamond and what y infinity diamond are. So y infinity diamond of, well, now the objects are these uh, perfectoid Hubert pairs. Uh, I'll say out loud what that means, but it doesn't really matter what that means. Uh, so here, R you can think of as being some piatic Bonnach algebra. Uh, it's uniform, uh, and then this is something inside of it. Uh, why don't I say more? Well, because in this case, you can just define sort of this diamond by taking sort of the R points of your scheme. So sort of giving uh, at the functor of points is sort of just the scheme theory functor of points restricted to this. Um, this is something special about 
uh, finite type applied schemes that this happens. Uh, and similar, y diamond of R, R plus. So this is y infinity diamond, and sort of we can do the same thing with y. So sort of normally you might think of the amplification as being originality space, but I'm just sort of skipping that and going straight to uh, the functor on uh, perfectoid rings. Uh, is it just y of R? To describe these spaces, like, again, you're just sort of, the points are just correspond to elliptic curves of some extra structure. For some. So someone's a completely possible thing. Uh, Good, and so these fit together in sort of a diagram that I want to study. Uh, so I have y uh, infinity diamond. So I can sort of analytify this map row, and I move more space, uh, and I get a map to y diamond. Uh, and then I also have a map to p1. I can do one, so to also luckily define the exact same way. Uh, uh, and so this is the Hodge Tate period map. Let me just say what these maps do. This is called high Hodge Tate, it's introduced by Schultz. Uh, so here do we have other colors. Uh, I have a point EQ phi, so some R, R plus point. So down here, I just map that to EQ, I forget. The utilization of the hate module. And so the interesting thing is to say what the Hodge state period map does. Well, yeah, the functor points to this thing, I just need to give a, a rank one projective R module uh, and sort of a surjection onto it from R squared. Uh, and this just comes from the Hodge Tate filtration on the Tate module. So what, what do I have? Yeah, let me write like this. I have R squared. Using phi r squared becomes isomorphic to uh, the Tate module of my elliptic curve tensor uh, with r. And then there's a construction that goes and all the way back to Tate's first paper on t-visible groups, gives you a surjection of this thing onto the invariant differentials on the dual elliptic curve. Okay, and so, this is a rejection, and so I take the composition as a surjection. And so this map is a point of P1. So I'm just parameterizing the Hodge Tate filtration. I mean, maybe another, let me sort of write a little bit more about this. Blue is probably not a good color. Uh, maybe red is a good color. I mean, really, sort of what I can think a little bit more sheet theoretically is I have some structure sheath. On sort of the V site of this of the diamond Y, if I tensor sort of the Tate module with that structure sheet, then this picks up a filtration where sort of the quotient is omega E dual and the sub can be identified with the, the algebra E and twisted by one. You can think that's either a Tate twist or a break kissing twist, depending on your life. Uh, okay, so this is called the Hodge Tate filtration. And so this is sort of a filtration of sheaves on the V side of Y, or let's say Y diamond. Uh, but once you pull it back to sort of Y infinity, then sort of this part just becomes trivialized to sort of post Okay. So this is some extremely interesting diagram that I mean, was introduced by Schultz and has had some really striking applications. Uh, for example, to the theory of chaotic automorphic forms, uh, both in Schultz's work, uh, then in uh, Louis Pond's work, uh, also sort of in this, you get diagrams like this for other Shimura varieties, uh, and even more generally than that, and sort of like Juan Esteban Camargo has done really interesting things, even for the applications sort of more general Shimura settings. So, so this is sort of some extremely interesting map to study. And that's all I'm going to tell you about why I'm doing this. Uh, so I just want to believe it's an inter I hope you believe it's an interesting thing to study. So it's going to let you reduce the geometry of this complicated space Y infinity diamond to the geometry of P1 in sort of lots of useful ways. Uh, and that's sort of basically how it shows up in various things. Um, what I'm going to talk about is sort of not sort of why this is a useful map to study so much as like I want to introduce a tool we can use to study this map, this map pi Hodge Tate, but also sort of invite this map row as well and sort of Y infinity diamond. Uh, in general. So, uh, I mean, 
the one thing I'll say is like this Hodge tape period map, I mean, this is a period map in the classical sense, just like in classical Hodge theory, you observe when you have like a family of, a smooth proper family of complex manifolds, you look at the period map for uh, like the Hodge filtration on its cohomology and that's supposed to sort of encode things about the geometry of like the fibers in their family. Um, so this is really a period map in that sense. Uh, and when you're doing complex Hodge theory, like one thing you'd really like to, you sort of like to do and is helpful is like differentiate period maps and sort of, you know, sort of use calculus when you're studying things. Um, and I, I want to be able to do that here too. Um, so, okay, I told you all of these things are schemes. Let me sort of, before I sort of get to what I actually want to do, let me just explain sort of quickly why like the naive scheme, theory, naive scheme theoretic approach to sort of like doing differentiation in tangent spaces doesn't work here. Uh, so, like, right, so, so in fact, my first attempt would be, uh, well, sort of y infinity, y p1, so they're all schemes over qp. y and p1 are sort of even finite type schemes of smooth, and so that they have, uh, and then these all sort of have Kähler tangent spaces. So just I can use sort of the universal derivation to define a tangent bundle for each of these. And for P1 and Y, I just get sort of like a one-dimensional tangent bundle, like the one you expect to get uh, when I do this. And for Y infinity, well, I mean, Y infinity is profinite at all over Y. So uh, when you do this, uh, you get a map. You can sort of differentiate row. So this scores are map. Uh, so y. And this is actually an isomorphism because Y infinity why is pro-primary So that's good. Uh, all these things have tangent spaces. Um, we do have one problem, which is, uh, unfortunately, pi Hodge Tate is not uh, a map of schemes. So actually, sort of provably, OK, it's a good exercise to try and prove this if you're bored. Uh, uh, pi Hodge Tate is not a map of schemes. So even though I could sort of define sort of the functor of points for each of those three things, sort of just like purely algebraically scheme theoretically, I mean, somehow getting this surjection uh, involved in a non-trivial way, actually specifically like the p-adically completeness of, uh, of uh, R. Uh, uh, so really sort of showed up there. So this is not a map of schemes and sort of, sort of well, implicit, necessary sort of was a p at completion. So I somehow, maybe let me elaborate, you can sort of find like on the lots of elliptic curves over QP bar where the Hodge tape filtration is sort of defined over CP but not QP bar. And so basically anyone whose formal group is not CM uh, or whose P divisible group is not CM will satisfy this. Uh, so somehow in order to find this map pi Hodge Tate, you really have to pass to some analytic world, in particular, you need sort of some p-adic completion. Um, but when you sort of look at this ring sort of O of y infinity, so the scheme theoretic sort of functions, and you sort of complete, okay, and sort of seems sort of vague, but uh, basically you get a perfectoid algebra, or at least sort of any on any affinoid piece, you get a perfectoid algebra. Uh, so do a short talk. Um, but this is bad because, I mean, some perfectoid algebras don't have uh, continuous derivations. So uh, there are no <laughs> continuous derivations <clears throat> on a perfectoid algebra. Okay. So now suddenly it does become important that I say, a little bit about what a perfectoid algebra actually is. Um, so it's not just some arbitrarily, arbitrary sort of piatic bonduck algebra. I mean, it satisfies some property which you can paraphrase by saying uh, it contains approximate p power roots. Um, those approximate p power roots let you show that sort of any continuous derivation, say with values in the bonduck algebra, has to be identically zero. Let me sort of just like illustrate that for one example. So if I look at uh, 
So this perfectoid algebra that shows up when you sort of take a ZP1 cover of an annulus. So this sort of standard perfectoid annulus. Uh, this is sort of power series ring, a convergent power series ring, but sort of you add all powers, all P power roots of your variable Q, let's say. Uh, okay, so, so this is sort of an example of a perfectoid algebra. Uh, and if I look at this guy, uh, so a little bit of, I mean, maybe for simplicity, I'll take derivations over CP in this case. Uh, if I look at this, well, D log of Q to the one over P to the N times P to the N is equal to D log Q. So somehow this tells you that sort of if I have some continuous derivation, well, if I see what it does to sort of D log of Q, that thing is gonna be arbitrarily P power divisible. And so it's going to have to be zero. So that's why I sort of this statement holds. Um, Okay, so, so I mean, on the one sense, that's actually fine. All that tells us is when we sort of do analytic geometry, what we have to do is sort of, well, the tangent bundle here is just sort of the standard one, the tangent bundle here is the standard one, the tangent bundle here is zero, and like these maps don't have, like these maps, these derivatives of these maps sort of have to be zero. And like that's a theory that is true and you can use that, but it's not very interesting uh, somehow if this tangent bundle is zero. Um, I mean, it is interesting for some things. For example, like this is a good way to prove like you can't have a map from a rigid analytic variety to a perfectoid space is to sort of use this tangent bundle. But okay, if we want to sort of have some interesting differential geometry of pi hodge eight, uh, then it's not so. So let's do something. I mean, the problem with periodic geometers these days, sort of, we're all sort of too sophisticated. We're all sort of trying to use sort of infinity sort of things. And uh, I, I, I mean, this is mostly in jest, but I mean, somehow uh, uh, the correct answer to this, this problem is to sort of forget, you know, algebraic geometry and sort of go back to like sort of differential geometry and differential topology, like, like your first year graduate classes or whatever, and sort of think about how you thought about tangent spaces and differential topology. Uh, to get a good idea about what should actually be going on here. Uh, and then we'll sort of show that guess is sort of actually, you can make some sense of it. Uh, so, uh, so sort of the attempt, the thing that works, it's going to be the following. So I look at this map and let me forget pi hodge eight again for a while. I'm actually going to forget pi hodge eight now for most of the talk. I mean, I want you to remember that my, my goal is actually sort of to be able to differentiate things like pi hodge t, but I sort of, and some of the problem I ran into now is that I need to have a tangent, a good tangent bundle of y infinity. And somehow pi, like the existence of pi hodge t is not going to play a role in sort of finding that good tangent bundle. It's sort of going, I'm gonna find the tangent bundle first and then sort of once I found the tangent bundle, I'll be able to differentiate pi hodge t sort of, sort of using that tangent bundle. So, so pi hodge t is gonna go away, away for a while, but some of this, this Map row, this GL2ZP torsor uh, is essential. So this is a GL2ZP torsor. So each fiber, sort of, if I pick a point in a fiber, then the action of GL2ZP just identifies, like, the action map identifies that fiber of GL2ZP. And well, if I were in differential topology, and so this was like Y was now a manifold and uh, Y infinity was like a GL2 of R torsor, well, then I would know how to compute the tangent bundle of this map. So uh, in that case, uh, I would say, well, rho is a submersion, so its differential has to be surjective. So I should have, so this should be y infinity diamond of y diamond. So the tangent space, this y infinity diamond, the differential geometer, well, this will surject onto, say, the pullback of the tangent bundle of y. So I'm working with bundles over y diamond. And so the tangent bundle of y and this tangent bundle of y diamond, since this is sort of a, a finite type scheme or originality variety, it's sort of exactly what you think. So this thing's not changing. Um, and then the kernel of this surjection should be the tangent space uh, of a fiber. Well, the fiber here is GL2 of ZP. The Lie algebra, and so the tangent space sort of at the identity of that fiber should just be sort of the Lie algebra of GL2 of ZP. So it should be uh, so sort of the constant sheaf of QP vector space is GL2. So GL2 is the algebra of 
GL two ZP or just hand to space identity of like this like piadic manifold and like the really old sense of SIP. So this is a uh, four dimensional QP vector space, sort of treated as a constant sheaf of QP vector spaces. Okay, so this is what you would guess. Um, and so like in particular, Uh, so if you look at a uh, like CP point, uh, call it little y infinity, there's some elliptic curve over CP, the trivialization is Tate module on the point of order 13. Uh, then uh, sort of if I sort of just restrict there, then I sort of get like the hand of space at this point. Uh, projects on the hand of space of rho of y infinity. Uh, done. Insert now. So two is the kernel still. Uh, maybe I should have said this is the derivative of the action map at the identity section. Uh, but so, so we should explain why now this is just really a four dimensional QP vector space. And this is just a one dimensional CP vector space. And so the thing I'm looking for is an extension of CP vector space, a sort of one dimensional CP vector space by a four dimensional QP vector space. Okay, so I was trashing sophisticated people uh, earlier, but now we should be a little bit sophisticated and we should remember uh, that in Pieta Kodge theory, we have sort of Bonnet Colmed spaces. Uh, and this sort of gives a very natural category that's sort of arisen repeatedly uh, in pietic geometry and pietic Hodge theory uh, that is somehow built to contain interesting extensions of sort of finite dimensional CP vector spaces by finite dimensional QP vector spaces. Uh, so when we're looking for such an extension, sort of probably we're looking for a bonnet Colmet space. And in fact, this is consistent with sort of some instructions of tangent bundles that have occurred earlier, uh, for example, in the Frank Schultz Jacobian criterion, if you are uh, familiar with this. So I want to sort of find uh, some bonnet Colmet space. Um, in fact, I mean, somehow, and thanks to work of Arthur Cesar of LeBron, uh, then sort of some work building that of Anschutz and, Le of Anschutz and LeBron, in some I can really just think of, I mean, yeah, in survey, bonnet Colmet space is not so different from just a, a V sheaf in QP vector spaces sort of satisfying some properties. So I can just think about sort of V sheaves in QP vector spaces. Uh, and so, Okay, so I know I'm looking for an extension like this. Uh, the question I need to answer is what is the right extension? And why is it the right extension? So let me sort of answer the question of what is the right extension first, and then I'll, I'll tell you sort of more details about why it's the right extension. So. Okay, so, uh, well, we can actually compute the relevant X group in sort of a very concrete way. So if I look at X1 of this tangent bundle of my, this is like a, a line bundle, uh, this tangent bundle serves the, the finite level modular curve uh, by GL2. Well, there's a natural, Push out construction or sort of modification construction of the Farg Fontaine curve, if you prefer, uh, that lets you identify this with just a space of homomorphisms now from rho star of ty. I'm in, uh, uh, and then image is now not GL2, but GL2. So this is sort of a local some QP vector spaces. I want to. Sort of tensor with the structure sheets to turn it into like a vector bundle. Uh, but I also sort of want to introduce a twist of minus, uh, no, a minus one twist. Uh, so uh, this equality, you can deduce it from sort of theorem of Anschutz and uh, Lebra building on sort of earlier work of Anschutz. Uh, so this theorem is, I think, 3.8 in their uh, uh, Fourier theory paper. Uh, good. Uh, well, let me tell you what this twist is, just because sort of these things are going to start to come up a little bit more, I think, uh, in here. So, oh, 
Palm in which category? Yeah, so this is Palm in sort of uh, uh, Y infinity, the V site, and this is sort of uh, V site, and, and you can add this is Palm sort of, of O modules, I guess, and, and, this, and this and this sort of X in sort of QP vector spaces. Uh, okay, good. And so, uh, so I sort of, this sort of reduces the problem. I just have to give, so, oh, sorry, I was going to tell you what this O of minus one is. Uh, so let me just recall, or if you don't know it, then I'm just saying it. For any sort of perfectoid ring R, uh, you can do this Fontaine construction to produce a filtered ring D drama of R. And so the zero graded part of this beta realm of R is uh, just O, and then sort of the uh, error is just R. And so, so O of I just means that it applies to RR plus. This is just the I graded piece beta realm. Okay. So I have to give you some homomorphism in here. I want to give you an exception. With this. So, so I have the Kodaira Spencer map. So this is something sort of coming from. I want to come view it this one? I guess it's coming from the Durham homology of the universal family of elliptic curves over Y. Uh, so from kappa, from uh, omega e dual to the e. So this comes from. So this comes from large filtration and Gus Monin connection on H1 Durham uh, of universal family over Y. I mean, this is an algebraic map. This is sort of already sort of over Y, even about putting a diamond. Um, so I want to use the Kodaira Spencer map to produce something in here. Uh, uh, so I want to use ah uh, uh, would be tensored with T boys. Yeah, I sort of did the wrong uh, let me start. I wrote this not the way I wanted to write it. Let me write it sort of uh, the Kodaira Spencer map. I want to view it as sort of going from the tangent space of Y uh, to sort of Sorry, Homs from Omega E dual uh, to, sorry about that. Uh, and this is the differential of the sort of Hodge period map when you sort of use the basis of flat sections to point. That's sort of how you can think of this. Uh, okay, so I have this Kodaira Spencer map coming from Durham homology, or Durham homology. Um, and well, sorry, if I twist by, I don't twist at all if I sort of, sort of use the Hodge Tate comparisons, the relative Hodge Tate comparison. Then this is sort of somehow naturally in uh, sort of end DPE sort of tensor O, uh, uh, which sort of if I pull back by rho, then sort of TP of E becomes trivialized. And so this is just sort of. Uh, So I'm not spelling this out for a reason, um, but the point is, sort of, if I look at rho star kappa, sort of it, it is such a map. So rho star of the, if I pull that Claire Spencer morphism at the level, it's sort of a natural way to think of it as being a map, uh, sort of now valued in here, just using project take comparison. Um, Okay, so if you're bored, this is sort of a good sort of exercise to sort of, sort of spell this out. Uh, and this is the right answer. So this gives you a nice tangent bundle that satisfies lots of good properties. Um, I, yeah, instead of sort of spelling out this computation, sort of why this is really inside of here, I want to show you it. So I want to show you sort of some sort of construction uh, uh, 
or that sort of makes this, this Kodaira Spencer map show up naturally and sort of shows you sort of why it's sort of giving you such a thing. So, so let me do that sort of instead of spelling this out further right now. Uh, so, right, so, 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 right, so that means sort of telling you this is the right tangent bundle. I have to tell you why. So sure. is there a tape twist in the state comparison? What's that? Is there a tape twist in the whole state comparison? But, oh, oh. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so this should be. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sasha. Uh, okay. Uh, right, so, so, so why is this the right thing? Start a, a little bit confusing. Where are we fixing an elliptic curve? So E is sort of the, I, you can sort of do this sort of of the functor of points level and sort of just make this definition to define the functor of points, or you can uh, view E as the universal family, and this is sort of like the relative, and, but either way, this is sort of the relative Hodge state comparison. So did that answer your question? I mean, just in the definition of the Kodaira Spencer map. So, yeah, so it's also here also, I sort of, this is sort of the, the universal family. So I see, sort of like things are fiber wise. Yeah, so sorry about that, thank you. Okay, so, So why do I want to take this extension and not some other extension? So first observation, if I look at uh, uh, this X group, this is actually equal, sort of by push out, to the X group uh, where so instead of this QP local system here, I have this uh, vector bundle over here. This is something a little bit special with the fact that Y infinity is actually, uh, that Y infinity is actually a perfectoid space that sort of makes it true on the nose, but you can always sort of include it. Uh, good, so, uh, this is going to be useful because if I sort of look at the corresponding extension I get after push out, so I sort of replace this QP local system with sort of something like a vector bundle, uh, then I mean, this corresponds, to, like this is going to be a tangent space of something I can actually get my hands on. So uh, what is that thing? And I saw this push out level, the algebras, uh, the tangent space of the fibers sort of corresponds to looking at a push out of my horser under the natural map. From GL2 of Z peak, sort of the GL2 of diamond. So I treat GL2 as like a rigid analytic space, and I sort of pick the associated diamond. So I'm going to send R R plus to GL2 of R. So I can look at this, this map and I can sort of push out Y infinity along this map. So my infinity diamond, sorry, along this map. Let me give that thing a name and sort of spell out what that means. Y infinity. And, and sort of for analytic, this is related to some constructions of Lue and uh, of Wan, sort of this location comes from. So the Y infinity analytic, this is going to be, uh, yeah, so it's just this push out, which I denote sometimes with this wedge notation. But that literally just means I take the product, Y infinity diamond, over Y diamond with GL2, and then I quotient out by the GL2 ZP action, which sort of just like moves or Y uh, <clears throat> times K is e Y times KG is equal to Y K times G. So it just extends this GL2 ZP action to a GL2 action by certain making all the fibers bigger. Okay, so and maybe I should say different words in case it's not 
so this y infinity serve as a torsor of trivializations of the Tate module. Uh, if I sort of take the torsor of trivializations of like the Tate module tensor O, what I get is this y infinity n. So, and so this y infinity n, well, it still has a structure map to y. by rho n. Uh, and so by the same sort of heuristic justification, I mean, this should just have some tangent space. There's now sort of uh, an extension of, you know, just a subscript, sorry. Pull back of the tangent space of y. Now by the tangent space of GL2 diamond, which is sort of now this vector bundle GL2 tensor. It's sort of the tensor space of the identity of GL2 diamond. Okay, so this is sort of the same heuristic tells you that I should have an extension like this, or if this has sort of a good tangent space. This is sort of a funny thing when you start thinking about it. Um, now, the good news is we can, turns out we can actually give a completely rigorous definition of a tangent space for this thing. So, uh, so sort of somehow this will be something I can actually really compute the tangent space of the tangent space of this y infinity. This, this just makes sense. It'll be sort of kind of a nifty thing. Um, but it's related. Uh, by a pushover, basically. So by right sort of the inclusion of y infinity into y infinity n is always iota. Uh, well, okay, if this thing has a tangent space and sort of these are sort of compatible, then you should be able to differentiate iota. So you sort of think about what it means. I mean, the tangent space you get down here should exactly be sort of the push out uh, along this inclusion of GL2 into GL2 tensor L. So this would be sort of a push out. Uh, what I told you uh, is sort of again, sort of if you do a computation of this X group, you see the push out sort of preserves isomorphism classes. So uh, somehow if you know the tangent space of this thing, you sort of believe this inclusion map should be differentiable and you believe the tangent space of this thing should have the structure. And sort of if you can compute the tangent space of this thing, uh, you sort of know what the tangent space of this thing has to be. So it sort of somehow pins it down. Okay, so uh, what that means is sort of, we need to compute In a reasonable way, the tangent space of line. So, yeah, and what do I mean by in a reasonable way? Well, it's sort of in the way that everything I've done so far has been unreasonable. Uh, I mean, I, I, okay, so I appealed to sort of our intuitions from differential geometry to sort of get some structure, and then I sort of happened to have some natural map in my pocket that I could use to find some extension. I mean, like I never said like, here's a thing, here's a definition of its tangent space, like here's how I compute it. I just sort of have been guessing sort of all along. Uh, what we'd really like is sort of some world where you sort of have like diamonds of some extra structure. In terms of that extra structure, you can define a tangent space uh, and then you make this computation and this is what pops out. So far in sort of everything I know, this thing, like I can't make it live in that world. I don't know how to make this thing live in that world. But what I'm saying is that I do know how to make this thing live in that world. And then, then I can sort of show you the actual computation to compute it. Now, probably for that reason, it's worth thinking a little bit about what is this space y infinity n. I mean, if I just look at sort of a fiber, sort of over a point in y, it's just GL2. It's sort of just like this rigid analytic space GL2. It's a sort of very possible thing. Um, and, and sort of, it's even true, I mean, sort of by construction, like it's sort of something mapping down to y. I mean, by construction, it's sort of pro etal locally uh, isomorphic to like the, the smooth attic space GL2. So it's somehow like some twisted rigid analytic variety over y. So it's some family, sort of pro etal locally is a rigid analytic variety, but sort of it's not actually a rigid analytic variety. Um, and 
I mean, one thing you could ask in this kind of situation is like, well, he's like, I mean, maybe this descent data is effective and sort of, uh, and what, what you find is in, in this case is no, the descent data is not effective. Like this does not descend to an actual originality variety. Uh, and somehow the structure of the tangent space will actually sort of give you a measure of that, uh, of, of that failure. Some kind of inverse limit of regenerative right here. What's that? This y infinity analytic. So, so, so yes, it's, uh, no, no, it's not. Uh, I mean, somehow it's sort of well approximated by sort of something that is. I mean, so it's, it's, it's well approximated by sort of. No, I guess you're right. And I, I, I guess sort of you like restrict this super singular because it is, and then maybe if. No, I, 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 I guess I guess it is sort of in general. Yes, you, there, I, I think there's a. I, you can you can write y infinity as the inverse limit of rich and yeah. right? It's sort of using like this embedding into sort of like this sort of universal thing for the Hodge state comparison. Is is this what you're thinking about, or? Sorry, I, I, I'm a bit confused. You uh, maybe you should come. To yeah, yeah, okay. Maybe I'll. Back to this. Okay. Maybe I'll explain the remark I just made. If you just look at y infinity itself, like there is sort of a way to almost embed this into a regionality space, and then you can sort of, sort of by sort of tweaking a little bit, you can sort of take an inverse limit where you sort of really, you can take an inverse limit over neighborhoods under sort of this almost embeddings, and then sort of also increase some level, uh, and in that way you sort of sort of give some different presentation of it. As sort of inverse limit of originality spaces that's sort of more related to this analytic structure. Um, but okay, that, that's sort of not important right now. Uh, right, what I want to do is sort of I want to sort of compute the tangent space of y infinity n. And so what I'm going to do. Tangent space y infinity n. I'm going to compute this using a different quotient presentation. So, I mean, y infinity n is defined using a quotient. So, it was a quotient of sort of y infinity times GL2 by sort of GL2 of ZP. Um, this is sort of not going to help me because I don't know what the tangent space of y infinity is. I need to write down sort of y infinity and some other way where I already know what the tangent space of everything involved is. That's just, that's sort of what's going to help me compute uh, the tangent space here. Yeah. What is the definition of y? Sorry, complete symbol in Qy. This thing? Yes. So this is the putative tangent space <laughs> of this diamond y infinity and, which I am hoping has a tangent space, but which I have not sort of Defined any natural framework in which that makes sense. Does that answer your question? <laughs> so it's, it's, some, and it's, it's something that I haven't told you why it makes sense yet, but I, but it, so once I compute it, then you'll see it makes sense. So it's like this is a GL two torsor over y, and then I want to serve it to have some tangent space, but I mean, it's not like it's not a rigid dynamic variety, so I don't know what that means yet. But I'm going to find out what it means. But so compute and enforce define, right? Or what? The word compute enforce the word define or enforce. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, somehow I want to compute it in a way that's so clear what I'm doing is the right computation that you don't even need me to define it. <laughs> so let me just, so this is this, okay, this different quotient is going to be sort of, of course, not quite, but this is going to be related to Piatic Simpson, um, sort of a very simple version of it. Let me just do some notation really quickly. So I want to sort of consider a bigger sort of structure sheaf for this O1. Uh, and when I evaluate this on R plus, I just get, I take fill zero meter on, meter on plus, mod fill two meter on. So this is just sort of B plus draw on T squared. So we're talking about this. So it's a square zero extension. It's a ring. It's a square zero extension of O by by this Brody Christian twist of O. Okay. Um. So now I'm going to define 
some auxiliary space is going to show up in this motion dimension, which I'll call y. So subscript one is being sort of corresponding to some deformation of y. So y was this finite level modular curve. So y1 diamond is going to be, well, when I apply it to r, r plus, instead of taking elliptic curves of some extra data over r, now I'm going to sort of take elliptic curves of some extra data over this deformation. This is y of uh, 01 of r. I, is, that, is this the board I should be erasing? Maybe I'll leave this up. Uh, so. I can sort of fit a little bit more here. So this thing maps sort of an obvious way, sort of by quotient down to, to O. Uh, the Y dot sort of takes it on the line R point. Uh, good. And so uh, uh, this is a torsor for now. The twist of the tangent bundle. Okay, so this is thing that's called, uh, well, in sort of many different contexts, sort of things like this are called the Higgs Tate torsor, sort of going back to the work of uh, Abbas and uh, Gross. Uh, and sort of this thing sort of appears specifically under this name uh, in uh, Ben Hoyer's work on Piat Simpson. But this is this, this is the Higgs Tate torsor. Sorry, what is that? So how do you send y of and one of R to y of R? You just uh, sort of have the inclusion of the of the the closed point, sort of spec R into spec of sort of B plus R R mod T squared. I sort of just compose of that. And it's a little bit funny because it goes like the opposite, and you would expect sort of deformation, sort of you'd have the map going the other direction, but somehow this definition turns the arrow around. So this is the Higgs tape torsor. Okay, and so now here's the presentation I want to use. Uh, here. So this thing I'm interested in is y infinity n. Um, I can write it as a quotient of something by an action of ty1. So this twisted tangent bundle. That thing is well, then kind of this y1 diamond. Uh, and then I have a product of this over ty diamond. With uh, the sort of now rigid analytic sort of GL2 torsor of ice. Is a little bit bigger. Now, this rigid analytic GL2 torsor of isomorphisms from O squared uh, to Lee E twisted by one plus omega. So this is associated graded for Hodge Tate filtration. So another way, what this is, and this is actually sort of a very classical statement, just sort of packaged in sort of a funny way. Uh, I'm saying that once I'm sort of given the lift to B plus drama mod T squared, the Hodge Tate filtration sort of splits canonically. So that's sort of all this is really saying. And essentially, okay, I'll say, I'll say what so I'll say what this action is in a second. This can be this quotient, um, but uh, essentially. I mean, the, the, the statement sort of basically goes back to the fault things like Hodge Tate for Hodge Tate's uh, structures on modular forms paper. I mean, sort of, if you want to sort of prove in a modern language, like the, the PX seems like correspondence of Lu and Zhu is sort of like beyond sufficient. Um, okay, so this isn't using much PM Simpson to get this. So, so what is this quotient? Uh, well, so this acts as the product of sort of the Forzer uh, action on sort on y one diamond, so just sort of standard action on y one diamond, and so the map. Uh, I'm going to write this way. Just I'll raise a matrix. 
one diaspentric crystal by one, zero, one on the right. So this matrix is sort of a section of the automorphisms of so this Lee E one plus omega E dual. So this, this is now omega just automorphism sort of accent surface isomorphism sheet. Okay. Uh, good. So some, I mean, this is like, and this is sort of like a Hodge tate comparison sort of plus epsilon because you've sort of split the Hodge tate filtration by passing the space tate points. Uh, but this is good because it really gives you, gives you now sort of a presentation and sort of why infinity and using like two very simple things. So the point is sort of the tangent space of this product makes total sense. So it's more of a I won't repeat it, but this, this is, sort of, is very reasonable. So, could I ask about the fourth one? Yeah. Uh, is it correct that it really doesn't depend on the rank to ZB local system itself, but only on the associated Higgs bundle? Just the way it's written? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so, 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 so in a more classical way to say this kind of thing is uh, uh, saying, oh, wait, some it's of the extension good. classes in the Hodge tate filtration are sort of given by the Kodaira sensor map. And so <laughs> now the Kodaira sensor map is sort of contained in sort of the Simpson correspondence. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Uh, okay, good. So, so the canvas space of this product is very reasonable. Um, like this thing on the right, this isomorphism sheet, like that is just, okay, up to sort of, because I'm working over QP, there's some sort of tetris, but if I like base change to CP, like that is literally just like, that thing on the right is just a rigid analog space over, over CP. So that has a tangent bundle. So you can write down what it is. Uh, and this Y1 diamond, Well, if you think about it a little bit, you'll see that I means sort of somehow its tangent space is just sort of an extension of the tangent space of Y by sort of the tangent space of Y shifted by one. So it's sort of a locally free of rank one O of one module. Uh, so somehow the fact Okay, and so, so you have this event. Okay, so you get the tangent space of this thing in sort of a very explicit, basically a very explicit way. I mean, this is just sort of a product, sort of like, so when you sort of differentiate this, this action, so when you, yeah, you compute the tangent space of a quotient, you just sort of take the quotient of the sort of the tangent space by sort of the image of the differential. When you differentiate this action, well, on the one term, you sort of just get the inclusion of this TY1. And then on the other term, you just get sort of the Kodaira Spencer map sort of showing up in this natural way. And if you sort of sort through everything, You'll see sort of exactly what I wrote before. You can write it pretty clearly, but it involves a diagram chase. So let me not do it in the last five minutes. Um, there are the dimension of the tangent space. Yeah, so it's sort of an interesting thing. I mean, it is like as a bottom homeless space, it is sort of has five CP dimensions. So sort of four coming from GL2, one coming from uh, sort of the tangent space of Y. Uh, but sort of it's not, and it's not sort of an O module. Like it's it's not a vector bundle. It's sort of because it has sort of some not like it has some T torsion part, but it has non non T torsion part as well. Sort of going from its O one. Sorry, this is a dimension for the Y infinite tangent space of Y infinity and other two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so in the points you can, you you can really compute all this in this in. I didn't tell you sort of the definition of the tangent space of such a thing, but like, I mean, it's basically an extension of the Farg Schultz heuristic, but sort of applying a tangent space stuff like this kind of thing. And these, so these computations are actually all rigorous in sort of some language. Um, what can you do with this? Uh, I wanted to say something about pi Hodge tate. You can extend pi Hodge tate to a map on this y infinity n. I mean, sort of one way to see that is just this was like in the Hodge tate filtration is on sort of tate module tensor O, and this is just the pores of trivializations of that. In terms of this quotient presentation, I mean, it's just the classifying map for like the surjection of O squared onto omega e dual you get on the second factor. And sort of that, that, that map sort of factors through this quotient. Uh, so, that's, so, so, in some way, using that, you can really sort of compute 
what is the Hodge state period map? And so what if it's a derivative on sort of this thing? And then sort of by composition with the map from y infinity, also what is like the derivative of like the original Hodge state period map, not sort of this analytic extension. One interesting thing you find is that the Hodge state period map is a subversion only over the super singular locus. Uh, well, sort of the analytification, like the analytic version, sort of this thickening of it, the submersion over the whole modular curve. And this sort of, if you think about this right, this more or less accounts for like the difference in structure between the Guza varieties, sort of the, the fibers of Hodge state pair maps uh, in that setting in sort of an interesting way. And more generally, it seems like there sort of should be a fairly rich theory, sort of a thick and thin uh, transverse intersections that sort of shows up when you can sort of do these tangent polygons. Um, that's one thing I wanted to say. Let me do something actually interesting. Okay, so let me do something like this actually that's cool uh, as, as an application. So, sorry, before you do it, yes. this. So, I'm still confused about like if you just take this as a definition, it looks to me it's a rich analytic variety or at least can be embedded in tours. Well, but, but so take which one is the definition? The, the, the bottom line. Yes. Yeah. But it's not why infinity is not. Analytic. Yeah, but uh, when you quotient by GL to ZP, uh -huh. I felt. I mean, so the, the point is like, like it's sort of the, the scent is not effective in the category for channeling varieties. The descent is not effective in the category for channeling varieties. So, sort of, so, like, you sort of don't descend sort of GL2. Like, the GL2, like, this sort of maps down sort of like as a relative rich analytic variety, but somehow, like, when you do that descent down to y, sort of by the GL two ZP action, like what you get. Let me let me say it this way. There's a natural notion of like a rigid analog variety over a diamond, and that is not equivalent. Like if 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 I take sort of a rigid a rigid analog variety and I sort of pass to associate diamond, and then I look at a rigid analog variety over that over that diamond, that is not the same as sort of a rigid analog variety mapping down to it. But maybe maybe I can say something more about this afterwards. Into what you think of them? So, so uh, I mean, what, you have tangent spaces. What you want to do with them is differentiate things. In particular, you want to differentiate functions. So, and in fact, it's not too hard to use in that quotient presentation to show vector fields. Capital vector fields are sort of sections of this tangent bundle on surface y infinity n act by derivations on sort of the ring of function, the deeper functions on y infinity n. Okay. Um, but sort of it's like these vector fields, sort of they're sections of this tangent bundle. This is an O1 module. Or sort of this is sort of an O module. And so what you expect and what you can show is true is that this derivation action sort of fact is not just sort of TY and PM, but sort of factors through like the tensor product. So uh, so you get sort of derivation action of TY infinity and tensor for O of one. So this gives you a sort of nice way to think about a very important result of Lewis. Uh, so let's compute what this uh, what this uh, tensor product is. So recall I sort of had this map to have this extension structure. Uh, for my uh, tangent bundle. So I can tensor this with sort of uh, O over O of one. Uh, and well, this is an O module already, so this doesn't change. This is the thing I want to compute. This thing is an O module already, so this doesn't change. But in this thing here, this is really, and this was like a torsion O module, so you get a tor one term. So this tor one term, then you can really identify it as sort of this 
dy dominant gamma now sort of uh, twist by one. It's, in, in this case, the sequence actually starts with a zero there. Let me just erase this. And you can compute this map. This is just the Kodaira Spencer map sort of twisted by. Uh, so if you sort of think through what this says, I mean, this, this derivation action is sort of not arbitrary. It sort of extends the derivative, like, like you have this GL2 action sort of on this torsor, and sort of you can sort of differentiate sort of along that GL2 action. And so, and that's sort of what this sort of GL2 tensor O part is doing. But if this thing acts by derivations, well, that means when you restrict it to GL2 tensor O part, anything that's in the image of this has to act by zero. So that means that sort of kappa one sort of this image annihilates functions. And hey, let me sort of add one thing. So I have this sort of O y infinity and if I pull it back by my inclusion of y infinity, well, this is what Louis or Juan would call maybe O y infinity diamond. Yeah. So this is sort of the sheaf of sort of the pullback of this sort of sheaf of function of y infinity n is uh, just the sheaf of sort of locally analytic functions on y infinity. And so this is uh, the sort of annihilation property for the geometric send morphism uh, uh, in, in sort of Lewis theory. Um, and so I'm sort of so the nice encoding and so on falls out very naturally from just the statement that you can differentiate uh, functions along vector fields and sort of that sort of gives a nice way of thinking about that. Uh, there are other things you can do with this, but I'm two minutes over, so let me not say what those other things are. Any questions? So can you either describe or hypothesize as to <laughs> you take sort of the cotangent bundle, can it be described as like satisfying some sort of universal property for derivations that are something bigger than continuous? Or is there no hope of such a thing? I mean, so depends what you want to do. Uh, when you have this y infinity n, which should be true, especially in this case, because sort of y infinity is, okay, so some, some, probably some version of sort of, the, the tangent space of this y infinity n thing is, is, is essentially sort of uh, the universal thing that acts on sort of derivations, sort of on sections of like b plus, like on functions not valued in sort of o, but sort of in, in o of i for all i. In this case, you would go up to like o of two. Um, that doesn't work for y infinity itself, which is somehow, and, and sort of the, the naive things you could guess for y infinity aren't, don't seem to be right, sort of along those lines. So somehow like, yeah, I mean, this is sort of an interesting thing. It's sort of, yeah, right, once you sort of get to this theory, you can sort of actually sort of think of it in a reasonable, like once you get to y infinity n, like one way to sort of interpret the definition, it's not the only way, but one way is sort of, you can actually sort of try and think of it as a sheaf of derivations on sort of some sheaf of functions. But sort of as far as I can tell, like this doesn't sort of work for, for y infinity itself. I mean, the structure of the, the big, like, I'm not like there, are, there are good reasons you want to sort of keep track of the structure of the whole, all of y infinity. So for example, like this gives like a really, like a fun encoding of uh, a conjecture of one. So yeah, so and this all applies sort of to any like piatic Lee torsor, I mean, you have to change a lot of things, but I won't tell you what they are. Uh, but like one has a conjecture about sort of when uh, piatic Lee torsor over originality variety should be perfectoid. And sort of, well, in terms of these tangent bundles, you can sort of encode that as saying that like, the and it should be true in the tangent space at any point is perfect. Well, that's an example of, sort of the extra structure you see if you sort of keep track of this bigger bit. Okay, I guess you can actually sort of technically see that one in the end if you're careful, but it's not I don't know if that answered. So, is yeah. there a prediction like in what generality this tangent space should exist or like what is extra data? Yeah, uh, and I don't know. I mean, basically, okay, so, so there's a Spark Schultz uh, construction so that applies the Spark Schultz Jacobian criterion. So, this is sort of the first sort of construction of tangent bundles like this. Uh, and this sort of applies to sort of a fairly specific thing, which is sort of moduli spaces of sections for smooth, for smooth attic spaces over a relative far curve. Um, but, but if you sort of stare at this for a second, you see that sort of, well, if you don't care about actually proving the Jacobian criterion, then sort of that heuristic that they use sort of 
is not just a heuristic, you can sort of make it a definition that applies sort of much more generally. Like for example, like you don't have to work over the whole frog fontaine curve, you can work over like an infinitesimal neighborhood of sort of like this canonical divisor infinity. And, and you sort of recover like the definition of like these Y1 diamonds or even like the definition of a tangent space of originality variety. So somehow like, like, like this Y1 diamond and sort of tangent space of originality variety and sort of the frog schultz heuristic, like, like those are all sort of on the same footing in terms of definitions of tangent spaces. Um, uh, and, and basically sort of the meta principle that sort of applies there is that, you know, whenever you have Okay, there's sort of two main principles. One is like the constructions of diamonds we actually care about sort of often carries along with the extra information that is sort of sufficient to define a tangent bundle. And that's sort of like one way to think about things. Um, and sort of all of those cases, sort of the, the, you can refine that heuristic and basically say like, if you have a sort of a diamond where you sort of have some description of uh, its, of, of its functor of points, Sort of in terms of just like maps of attic spaces, uh, then in fact, like you can sort of basically always just like add an epsilon in order to find a tangent bundle. In some way, like if, if, if your actual definition sort of doesn't use like, like uses spa of R plus sort of mapping to something, then you can also like do spa of R plus sort of a join epsilon or like the Frog Fontaine curve, like you can just add an epsilon to the structure sheet. This gives you a perfectly reasonable definition of tangent space. Like this is like a more rigorous way to think about the Sparge Schultz construction. Um, and so that, that sort of includes most of the things that show up sort of once you start making these reductions, but it doesn't sort of include sort of Y infinity itself. And so it's sort of a, a mystery to me, sort of, yeah, to me, it's a little bit of a mystery what is sort of the right way to sort of build general theory that should include this, or this Y infinity itself and not just like Y infinity. So you said that for Y infinity, you cannot extend it to R plus, R R plus epsilon or? Well, yeah, and you you can, but that would sort of give you the zero. Like some of them, that would sort of, I think that some of this would give you the zero answer. Like, this would give you like the, like the zero that sort of came from perfect weight algebra, sort of not having uh, not having tangent bundles. If I replace y by any um, perfect um, energy dynamic variety, yeah. Um, by any activity. Yes. Then the last thing is going to work still. Yes. This will still work. I mean, maybe the only thing that I should be careful about is I know in, in that setting, uh, in that setting, maybe a priori this thing, I don't think about maybe a priori this thing could be sort of larger than this thing. Um, I would have to think about like let me not try and answer, but, but a priori, I, I think this sort of this thing, certainly this thing is contained here, but maybe it would be this would be possibly larger. Uh, but 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 okay, I'm still I, it's still not it's this thing. So so you still get sort of the nomination. So does your construction of rely on the local system being push state at least? Yeah, so so the way I said it, it does. Uh, but it doesn't actually. So 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 I, yeah, so this is I find I have very bad time management skills, and especially in this talk. Uh, so this is sort of in the things I didn't say. Uh, 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 and this, this whole construction sort of applies, but, but there, there are some serious changes you have to make um, in terms of, and then they're simple. Like you just replace, you replace the Clara Spencer map with the geometric send morphism uh, sort of way to find first and then and Camargo sort of extend it. Uh, so you use the geometric send morphism to define sort of which extension you take. Um, but then you want to still be able to justify that. So uh, in, the, uh, in this Pierre Simpson perspective, uh, you, you can. I mean, somehow there's a, there's a way to think about Pierre Simpson as sort of coming, and sorry, about, about the geometric semimorphism is actually sort of coming from local presentations of this sort. Uh, uh, sort of now it's not globally, but sort of somehow locally. And you can sort of, when, when you prove like the geometric semimorphism is well defined, uh, you're sort of at, at the same time you're proving the sort of the tangent bundles you get out of these local presentations are sort of sort of naturally isomorphic to each other. So uh, this is sort of how that goes. And there's this whole other story that I didn't say I wrote in my abstract, but that obviously didn't say anything about where I mean you can you restrict to like in this module curve you restrict to like a good reduction sort of uh, uh, if you restrict to like a, a reduction disk like sort of for some mod p point then you have a uh, 
identification of sort of y infinity restricted to that uh, with uh, sort of an infinite level local Shimura variety. Now, these infinite level local Shimura varieties, you can sort of, well, sort of in some case, in these cases, sort of basically due to Ivana from Weinstein, and then there's sort of some complete generalization of this to all infinite level local Shimura varieties and non minuscule generalizations. Uh, you can sort of write down tangent bundles of those via the Farag Schulte perspective, and you want you can sort of compare those. Um, this works actually quite a bit more than you might expect. So, this, like this, you can make a version of this work all the way up to sort of the nil potent setting. So, whenever your geometric send morphism or your, your Higgs field is, is nil potent, sort of some version of this still works. Uh, but sort of after, sort of in the total generality, sort of that sort of justification things for things breaks down, but somehow this Pietic Simpson justification is robust. I, I don't know, did that answer? Your question? Sure. Uh, what is the expectation also, like in general, when this tangent space makes sense? An element of what category should it be? Ah, yes. So, so the tangent bundle, I mean, at least in the sort of places where it's constructed, and it's just a, okay, you, you, it's, it's a V sheaf of QP vector spaces. Uh, I mean, in, in the examples I talked about today, and so many of the examples you want to discuss, like it's a V sheaf of QP vector spaces that should should be a relative Bonacle mess space. I don't know a definition of relative Bonacle mess spaces that's maybe the right one, but this this is sort of the ones that are there are sort of obviously in any definition. But it's a V sheaf of QP vector spaces whose like restriction to every geometric point is a Bonacle mess space. Um, is there one way you can think of this? Uh, it, it, you don't want to sort of impose this finite dimensionality condition of a bonach space in general, uh, because for example, it turns out to be extremely useful to be able to talk about, yeah, when you're sort of differentiating more general period maps, it seems to be sort of extremely useful to be able to talk about the tangent space of like the Biderah Mathai and Grassmannian without sort of restricting to like a Schubert cell. In fact, there's sort of things you can't do if you restrict to a Schubert, Schubert cell. And so like the tangent space of this thing, well, this has an action of G of Biderah on it, and if you think about it for a second, the tangent space of this thing is sort of G, so the algebra of G, tensor B to ROM mod B to ROM plus. Uh, and then it's right here for fun. If you sort of do sort of now like this infinite level G of QP cover, uh, this has a tangent space, which is just G tensor so V E. Uh, and so, okay, this only makes sense if you know what this notation means, but you don't, sorry. <laughs> so this is a G of QP coarser, and sort of you have uh, so you do this map and sort of get by the same sort of ideas. The differential pi is sort of just, I mean, some of this G of QB torsor, if you look at sort of this tangent space, you just get it sort of from the fundamental exact sequence tensor with the algebra of G, um, which is sort of an incredibly simple thing. So this, I mean, this MB sort of, you get to all the infinite level local Shimura varieties for B sort of by restricting it over Schubert cells in the affine Grassmannian. And this now gives you a way so you can compute those tangent spaces because you can sort of see what, like, you just take the fiber over the tangent space of the Schubert cell inside of here, which is sort of something that you can sort of just describe. So somehow it's, it's actually, and this is much easier than like, for example, like the Ivana Weinstein way, uh, even a Weinstein, Weinstein way of, of, of uh, uh, computing sort of tangent spaces of infinite level of sort of EL infinite level Schwer varieties. And so, so you don't want to sort of necessarily impose the restriction of finite dimensionality in the theory because you sort of, I don't know, you, you, you limit your tools and sort of a battle. Other questions? Okay, no, let's thank the speaker.